Inspiration and experience go hand in hand for us and inform how we see the world. We want to make work that's reflective of those two things. Uh, hi, Adobe Max. Uh, we're Wade and Lita, and we run a creative studio aptly named Wade and Lita from Brooklyn, New York. We're also married, so even before quarantine, it's been like this all the time. And we do everything together, um, from cooking to jogging to drinking to working. We like the same things and sometimes we wear the same clothes. Um, and yet we're from two entirely different countries uh, on opposite sides of the world. Our worlds were so similar, but it actually took an algorithm to bring us together. Wade and I met on an online dating website, and we were both engrossed in our own work lives and focused on our own goals and futures, but that quickly changed when we met each other and we realized it was way more fun for us to do those things together. And once we found each other, we realized there were so many more things that we could do and share together. We found connections in art, architecture, books, fashion, food, the general things. But we also found a fondness in our ability to find random things on the internet, like this beautiful image. And we found our love for reinterpreting these things. So for context, in the early stages of our relationship, we started this personal project called Compliments. It's this portrait series exploring our relationship and the universal strangeness of love and the things that inspired us. Together through doing this, we found better ways to understand each other and we found our own ways to be vulnerable, to help our love grow, to be honest and true and open with one another and to trust without fear in order to build greater things, not only in our relationship, but also in our projects too. And we found that we could push each other for better results. We could be true with our opinions without having this fear of failure. And it helped us navigate our mutual love for creating and it gave us the starting point for making more creation moving forward. And eventually we found that our work and our lives have truly become intertwined. There was no separation between the two. With success of one, we'd use it to push ourselves within the other. Our work makes us happy and it keeps us healthy and it keeps us active at the same time and it's very much our way of life. We found our comfort zone and then we figured out how to escape into the world of it together. And our relationship has grown over the past seven years. We have found ways to continuously build and also evolve this open world with one another. And one that feels kind of like our own paradise of color, shape and pure joy. Inspiration and experience go hand in hand for us and inform how we see the world. We want to make work that's reflective of those two things. And from the travels that we used to, hopefully will continue to take, to the TV shows that we watch, to even the video games that we play, we want to make work that reignites all of these feelings, like that feeling you get when you beat a hard boss on the top of a mountain in an RPG game, or the pure ecstasy of knowing you can eat as much ice cream as you wanted for your birthday. We still think about escapism in the same way as we did as children, where imaginary worlds abstract our concepts of real life logistics and allow us to embrace our lack of linearity in a fantastical world and create essentially an unfiltered lens on the world for us. When we create, we still think about the same things we did when we were 12 and the worlds that we loved in involving ourselves with. Things like Pokemon, our gateway into the world of escapism, and other things like anime and manga, Hunter x Hunter for instance, but also RPG games like that were on PlayStation and Nintendo and the sheer joy of embarking on a journey to save the world and collecting friends along the way. And one of our favorites of all time is Takeshi's Castle, just the pure artful DIY of survival TV. These provided a moment for us to step back from reality so we could concentrate on the color, the architecture, and the characters in these alternative worlds. And who's to say that you have to give these feelings up when you become an adult? We still crave the same need for exploration and adventure, and we travel to fulfill that. We'll journey across the world so we can see some incredible architecture or have a once-in-a-lifetime experience. Color, energy, shape, form, and things that make people feel good are linked into our work. So here's a little snippet of that.
So as you can see, we've made it our mission to make work that can let people experience a moment outside of reality. And whether it exists in a physical or a digital space, we make that possible by creating things like sculptures and public art, but also physical experiences and parties, and also virtual experiences in VR, exhibitions, art direction of photography uh, for collaborations and campaigns, and working with brands and products to help define who they are, but also the worlds that they live in and how they present themselves digitally. The thing is, the act of being creative requires trust. It requires us to let go of our reality and give in to these instincts. We need to trust in our vulnerability that helps us create and how we feel. It requires us to trust in our skills or lack thereof. And to be honest, Wade and I are pretty scrappy when it comes to the work that we make. We have no formal training outside of design and we'll teach ourselves techniques as we need them or collaborate with experts who can teach us how. We try to be in every aspect of our work from phase one to the final, whether we are painting, designing, drawing, photographing, we're going to be in it no matter what, in whatever capacity possible. No matter what we do, we want to be physically, emotionally, and mentally invested in everything that we're making. We want our minds and our bodies to be as much of a medium within our work as the camera, or the wood, or the paint. And we want to escape into the work that we're making. That's when everything comes together. It's this that has given us this revelation that we could use our work to reinvigorate ourselves and to create awareness not only for our eyes but also within our entire body so that we don't have to be stagnant. We don't want to be sitting in an office chair all day, every day. We can energize and interact with one another and keep ourselves healthy, happy, but also feel alive and keep our minds as active as our bodies. We want to create sculptural, colorful and immersive spaces and places and brands that you can interact with no matter how old you are or whether it's in real life or even in a headset. We want our work to be touched, to be climbed, to be photographed and to be felt. Perhaps you can dance with it too. Design should not be untouchable. We don't want to put our work on a pedestal. We want it to be for everybody. To help us define what we do and how we do it, we've created two principles that outline our way of working. One of them is purposeful eclecticism and the other is design as performance. What is purposeful eclecticism? What does it really mean? It's this mentality that you can give any project a face that makes it approachable, fun, but also subverts expectations. We use it as a way to typically take a traditional brief or a type of brief and give it an extra bit of oomph and take it to a new place altogether. And sometimes it's about taking what's at hand and using it to your advantage. A book about concrete buildings was designed with a concrete cover to reflect the content. It's about questioning the brief, reframing the request, manipulating it really to find what its purpose truly is. We try to see how we can cheat the rules and make our own to flip things on their head. And sometimes it comes from having to be resourceful and adaptive and from creating restrictions to find solutions. It can come from tiny budgets and ridiculously short deadlines. We can still create something big and impactful no matter the cost if we use the right materials and we also frame it correctly, like what we did here for the South Street Seaport. Whether it's a physical manifestation or a digital one, it's about finding a way to escape into the elements of color, shape, and surprise. We want to push our thinking and our minds to work in ways it hasn't. And at the end of the day, it's about people interacting with it and finding their own interpretation that makes the best feeling for us. Our second principle, design as performance, can be described as the manual effort that we put into our creation. Oftentimes when we make something in our studio, we work with really simple materials that are cheap and easy to manipulate. And so for designers' performance, we see our work as something that invigorates and exercises us, and it keeps us youthful and helps us balance this childlike wonder and excitement in our work. Because of that, a lot of our work is very physical. We use our own bodies out of necessity, and when we have an idea, we challenge ourselves to be as self-sufficient as possible to get the right shot. But we have to stress that this is not out of vanity, but oftentimes out of necessity. Um, with working with each other for so long, we really know how to direct each other to get the right shot. It's also because we don't want others to have to do this to get this. <laughs> we'll do it ourselves. And sometimes our two principles can meet, like with this identity we did for AIGA, where the brand we created started from this Vector Elements logo, and it ends up like this, where the brand can come alive. 
Why does the brand need to simply just be a vector logo that exists on a website or a printed product? We can personify it, we can use it in different ways. It can perform on its own in the world with people. And why can't we push ourselves to become these RPG characters we've always wanted to be by using our skills from design? Designer's performance doesn't exist only for us, though. It can bring people together. It gives people this opportunity to embrace one another and acknowledge that we're all in this together. Our work, it's for everybody. It's not meant for just one single person or for our own personal pursuit. It's about exploring ways in which people can interact and be enveloped in our own worlds and also possibly inspire people to make their own. We're always looking for a way to add interactivity to the work that we're making so that we can find this new path, whether we're the ones making it or we're the ones experiencing it, such as this maze that we made where people could get lost and be developed in these worlds of color. And that interactivity can come at the end, but oftentimes it comes right at the beginning when we're making things from scratch. We want to have a hand in everything that we're creating. As such, everything you've seen, it's created by either the two of us or maybe just a small team. And perhaps you're wondering, wait and Lita, why do you paint it by hand? Why sand and cut and glue when you can just hire somebody and watch from this imperfection in our projects? Whether we build it from the ground up or we photograph it on a set, we feel that when something is too perfect, it becomes forgettable. And that's why we make it by hand. We enjoy the faults and we embrace the differences. Everything feels more human that way. And that itself feels purposeful and eclectic in our eyes. It reminds us that we're a part of a bigger world. We have this opportunity to create a different culture that you can adapt to be a part of your own. We create our work so that we can further relationships and this optimism of human potential. We can share our escapism with others so that others can find refuge in our own worlds and feel inspired to build one of their own. If you can believe in something, we can find positivity in the situation at hand. Sometimes we want to avoid the bigger picture. The world is changing all the time. This year is very different from years before it. Life happens very fast and we need to embrace these special moments and focus on what's in front of us rather than what's happening around us. We need to remind each other to stay positive and to think of the small pleasures that keep us hopeful. Our relationship and our love keeps us optimistic and hopeful for what's in the future and knowing that the future will be bright, no matter where we are or who we are with, because it's always a team effort. Design and creativity are not about this heroic solitude. We don't need to operate that way. There's, there's always someone there who will be supporting you. And with Lita and I, our input has always been so strong into the other's output, it's almost like everything was connected to the other partner from the very beginning. Our work and our lives are intertwined and our dialogues are constant, always constant. And we push each other to new avenues that we'd never thought we'd go before. And like a building, your foundation has to be strong because if it is, you can build anything together. Cool. Thank you.